I started playing guitar when I was 11 or 12 because I was left-handed. My parents bought me a left-handed guitar. It was some crap kind of black Strat copy, probably 30 or 40 quid. But they, um, it, I, I loved it. In hindsight, it was a, an awful guitar, but um, I, I loved it at the time. Initially, I was going to go down the route of learning with a guitar teacher by going to lessons. And I turned up to one, turned up to the first one, and the teacher told me to not use the guitar that had been bought for me and to learn to play right-handed. And that really put me off. So I never went back and I taught myself how to play from then on out. So I just used tabs and, and stuff like that to, to teach myself. So the bands that made me want to pick up a guitar in the first place were bands like Green Day and Nirvana. They were just so loud and energetic and I think that at the time, being the age I was, I just wanted to pick up a guitar and turn the distortion all the way up and be as loud and angry as I could in my bedroom, just jumping around and stuff like that. Over the years, I've, like because of those bands, I started to get into go further into the like 90s rock scene. So bands like Dinosaur Jr. and My Bloody Valentine and bands like that. And over time, my taste has not moved away from that, but I think I've just involved more my musical collection, if you like. So I kind of got more into, from My Bloody Valentine, I started to get into more shoegazy kind of ambient bands and heavier rock bands like Nothing and Super Heaven and, and bands like that. So that's, that's mainly what I listen to. So Xander kind of stemmed from my, well, because of being left-handed, I was always restricted with the guitars I could buy. I'd walk into the music shop and there'd only be one or two left-handers and they were normally quite boring guitars. So that kind of got me into building and modding my own guitars out of parts. And then when I started getting interested in using effects pedals to change the way my guitar sounded, that same DIY attitude kind of fell into pedals. Started making a few kits for myself, just a couple of basic fuzzes and boosts. After that, I started to learn how to make pedals on Stripboard and Vero. I'd just make a few in plain enclosures and sell them on Facebook. And it just kind of snowballed from there after people started requesting more pedals from me and I was getting busier, I thought oh, I need to stop putting a name to this, putting some graphics on and stuff like that and build kind of building a, a brand around what I was doing. And that's kind of how it came about and then it just kind of turned into what it is now. Yeah, the company's been around for oh, nearly two and a half years now. The first year, we were really kind of finding our feet. It was all very kind of ad hoc. There was no real process or any kind of, well, any kind of process it put in place for, for building pedals. It was all a, a little bit messy. It was taking a lot of time to churn one out, but at the time we weren't really getting many orders, so it didn't really matter too much. Over the last year to 18 months or so, we've really tried to focus on streamlining the process of making pedals. So we've gone from building everything on um, Tagboard and Vero with all off-board wiring through to almost everything being mounted on PCB, um, which has made things much faster. We were having to fill more orders week on week. It's just made that whole process much quicker. So that's, that's basically been what I've been aiming for since we started was to get to a point where I can actually churn out, you know, maybe 10 pedals in a day if I really get into like, the grind of it. When the company first started out, we were still very much just kind of doing one for one clones or slight modifications on kind of classic fuzz circuits and overdrive circuits, which is fine. Some of our pedals are still very much that way, albeit we've added more and more and like stripped more away from the original circuit. So they're not complete replicas of you know what they were. But one of the things we've tried to do is overcome some of the issues that a lot of people have with the original circuits, whether it be not enough volume in it or there's a horrible mid range scoop or something like that. We've, we've tried to add you know more control over that so people can have that original sound if they want but also they can tweak it so that it fits their setup as we've moved forward some of the newer models are moving into more kind of original circuit territory and as we go forward that's more what we're aiming for as we get more involved in digital effects they will be completely unique to us Currently we make various fuzzes, overdrives and distortions and boosts and delays and reverbs. We are currently looking into branching out into areas that we've not been involved in before, which is like things like modulation and pitch shifting and gradually, you know, further and further into, into different effects that we've, we've not touched on before. So we try to make 
the pedals so that everyone's catered for at least so you know low gain overdrive would be more for the the blues guys they might like that where there might be some kind of crazy oscillating fuzz that you know more of the shoegazy or noise rock guys might like so we we try and make something that everyone's got something so even bass players or we've also had a couple of synth players contact us and want to try stuff out through their synth rig so we, we really do try and cater for everyone and especially going forward that will be another thing that we keep in mind is not just wanting to focus solely on guitarists for certain genres or just trying to make it a, a multi-instrumental effects pedal company not just specifically for guitar. Every time we bring out a new pedal I'm constantly surprised by the, the feedback and the support that we get not only from like, the community and the consumers that buy our pedals but also other companies. The, the pedal community on, on a whole is really supportive and collaborative with each other and it's, it's amazing to be a part of it. We, we travel up and down the country quite a lot doing shows and we get great physical feedback actually people trying stuff out and you know, in the room playing through an amp rather than just hearing it through a, a YouTube video or whatever so it's always nice to actually physically be in front of people and have, have their instant feedback and get that straight away from them. Andrew isn't my, isn't my full-time job. I work full-time as a designer for a company, uh, just a regular kind of nine-to-five thing like most people. The short answer is I don't really know how I fit it all in, um, especially with the addition of our daughter who's recently been born. Somehow we're, we're managing to stay afloat. Uh, it, it can be quite hard sometimes, obviously working evenings and weekends, it's not the easiest in the world, but if it ever got to the point where it felt like it was a job, where it felt like it was a burden, it would. I'd know that it would be the time to, to give it up, but I can't see that happening anytime soon. The ultimate aim is that I'll eventually stop selling directly. I'm currently in talks with distributors to try and get more of them on board so I, they can actually handle selling to retailers and I can actually focus on working with the brand, doing more trade shows, and possibly even take some of the stress of actually physically building the pedals away from myself. Also moving forward, we want to get more involved with digital effects, which is a, a, a enormous thing that I've been really kind of burying my head in for the last six months to a year, hoping to have something out within the, you know the next you know the next few months. It just opens a, a whole kind of new load of doors for different effects and different ways of processing a guitar signal or any instrument signal that we're we're really excited to be involved with. Currently, you can buy our pedals direct from us on our website or if you see us at a trade show. You can also buy it online from our dealers in the UK. We have also have dealers in Germany, the USA and Canada. The one in the USA is actually a physical store and we're hoping to have more dealers on board. You know, ev you know every, every month we're, we're picking up new people that are excited to get our stuff. So eventually we're hoping to have it in more brick and mortar stores where people can actually go in and, and try stuff out. From the moment I sold my first pedal kit together, it was just a simple boost, but I just remember finishing it, plugging it in, and step, when I stepped on the switch and it worked, it was just like the most amazing thing. It was like I'd invented the light bulb. It was, it was crazy. So since, since then, it's just, it's been amazing to learn more, get help from others, and kind of build Xander collaboratively. I, I won't pretend that I know everything. I, it wasn't my aim. I'm more than happy to have other people involved in it because at the end of the day, it's all about the, the end product that we put out. And as long as it makes other guitarists and other instrumentalists happy, then that's the best I can hope for. <laughs>